Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode of Crazy. I have been waiting to do this video for actually a number of years now and finally got the gumption to just get it in gear and do it. This is a Barnaby Wayne Fan FMX4 Facet Mobile. I did not build this airplane. This was built by the late Frank Hodson of the Thermal Thumbers and uh, built fairly lightly for what it is. I haven't weighed it, but it, it just feels nice and light. It, um, I've modified it a little bit. I adjusted the thrust line, put a different propeller on it, and, and so on. The airplane originally had this three-blade propeller. That is a fishing sinker right there on the nose. I'm, I am now concluded that this is, in fact, too much weight, and it was contributing to the problems getting this airplane to fly well. But regardless, uh, just some, some pretty amazing stuff. I, you can make it fly with this. Um, it's just very hard to trim. I think it's mainly that the propeller is actually too small. So then you're having to deal with very thin rubber motors and whatnot. Uh, I have stepped up to a six inch prop and, and so on. Uh, put new plastic on the windows. It had uh, what amounted to uh, saran wrap, which just would not stay stuck. By the way, there are windows under here too. It is very important that they stay firmly attached because that actually impacts the performance of the airplane because this is part of the airfoil of the aircraft. So all sorts of little things start to play in that, that become a major issue. Uh, the airplane has movable elevons back here and movable uh, fins for flight trimming, which introduces its own levels of complexity. Uh, I've done a lot of shimming which could be, you know, if I were going to fly this competitively, I would uh, clean all of this up. But the reality is I publicly admitted that I didn't build this airplane, so I can't compete with it, which is kind of sad, because I would like to enter this in a peanut scale contest just to just do it. And by the way, this monster, this is a peanut scale airplane. Uh, if, if you consider the typical peanut scale airplane's fuselage, if you were starting here, its typical fuselage would end right about here. Uh, a really big one's fuselage would end about here. So this should give you an idea that this is this is a crazy, crazy airplane. Uh, and we're going to go out and we're going to fly it and you should check it out. Alright, so to wind this thing up is uh, requires a little bit of a trick because the rear peg is vertically in here. And we're flying on uh, on four strands of 332nd, so two loops of 332nd, heavily braided, six inch prop with a little bit of lead stuck on it. Uh, but the way that you have to do this is you have to have a clip that fits over here. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to drop this pin through, and then this clip You've got to be careful because on this one I've got actual movable surfaces, which I'm not normally a fan of that, but the, you kind of have to on something this odd. But anyway, now we can slip this onto a piece of fencing wire. Because I don't have cattle, so I don't really need it. And we'll slip that over onto the pin, pull the pin out enough that it's not going to pull out. This is all just to ensure none of that vibrates loose while you're stretch winding. I should mention the uh, rear of the rubber motor is on a sleeve, so if you're looking for how to set up a rubber motor like this, uh, we've got videos showing the entire process. 
So nothing, nothing out of the ordinary on that. Now this is a very unorthodox airplane, so there are some things you have to do that you normally wouldn't. So you want to wind this airplane up all the way. <coughs> uh, you want to wind it up all the way, but ideally you would use a torque meter to get the exact launch torque. I don't have one on here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to back off. <coughs> Sorry, my wife is uh, having an allergy attack. So, we've been battling that lately. Recover the winds that were lost. And there we go. So, we can pull the pin. Get some all that. And with that, we're ready to fly. So the way that we're operating this is we're basically flying, we're uh, cross-controlling it to, to tame the high power portion of the flight. So I've got some left rudder here and fairly neutral roll trim. And then I've got right thrust to pull the airplane around. If it speeds up, the uh, left rudder kicks in and helps pull the nose back up. So we're launching just a slight right hand bank, like that. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the flying of the facet mobile. I've talked a little bit about the flight trim. The main thing is that you're uh, really just balancing this airplane to have thrust line pulling at one direction and a little bit of aerodynamic trim pulling at the other. Uh, I don't know if you noticed, in a few of those flights, we actually got it up high enough that it started gliding. I think that it could actually use a slightly longer piece of rubber. Um, Ideally, put a blast tube in it and wind it for real because uh, I, I was giving up some energy there. So I think we could probably get up to about 45 seconds with this airplane. Pretty amazing when you think about it. Uh, plans for this airplane are available out there. Uh, hopefully, I, I'm saying this before I've edited the video, I think there are plans on Outer Zone. I know they're out there somewhere and you can download them. And it's a little bit challenging of a build because basically you build the bottom surface of the air airplane and then jack this up to build the rest of the upper structure that sounds complicated in reality it's actually a very easy build you just take a few measurements and you start just putting stick structure in there and you end up with an airplane 
um, that if you follow a few simple thoughts, uh, it's really not that hard to trim. One of the things that's befuddling about trimming this airplane is that you'll be fighting it and it'll get into a turn and it'll just stay really tightly in that turn. So you give it opposite trim and it looks like it's going okay. And then a couple flights later as you're trying to add more power back in to get a climb going, the airplane will get upset and then it'll go off the other way. That is not a sign that your yaw or roll trim is off. That is a sign that the center of gravity is too far forward. Because what you're dealing with is that the airplane has spiral instability. And so there's no, there's very little aerodynamic dihedral, so you have to compensate. Uh, you know, you have your delta wing, which provides you some, some dihedral effect, but the CG has to be pretty far back. And so on ours, the CG is right about, right about there, so actually behind the landing gear. So if you're going to build an RC model of, of this or something, uh, you know, you want the CG further up here so that it will rest on its main landing gear correctly. But as a rubber model, the CG actually has to be pretty far back here, so as a result, this airplane just rocks back when you set it on the table. You can put some lead, uh, removable lead up here for um, static balance to provide that. But the bottom line is, uh, that's that's how you trim it, and it's um, it befuddled me for a number of years. I've been dabbling at this thing, I'd give it, get it out every two or three years and try to fly it. Uh, but I finally figured out CG's too far uh, forward, I needed a two blade propeller that's a little bit bigger, six inch prop, and now it's a delightful little flyer. So. Uh, stay tuned, We've got more cool stuff coming up, and we'll see you later. Hi, I'm Josh Finn. This is Hope. We are J&H Aerospace. If you like this video, hit the like button. Also, how about subscribe to our channel and check out jhaerospace.com for new free flight products and all of the tooling that you'll need to build them. Thanks for watching.